Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I've been dead for so long, or rather undead. Went out to grab some milk and immediately after forgot the way back to the ship. Speaking of undead though, we have a new sponsor for today's video by the name of the Questonomicon. Join our skeletal friend as they take you through multiple epic one-shots for both you and your party members. Push the limits of D&D and play the way that you want with content varying between a large array of themes, customizable villains, and settings. Hmm, I've always wanted to play in a D&D campaign like one of those Wild West shoot 'em ups. Well, now you can! If you're looking to enhance the book even more, they have a bunch of themed items you can pick up as well. The Kickstarter ends in less than a week, so check it out using the link down below. And with that said, let's get right on with the video. It's been a while since I've made a D&D story, hasn't it? Yeah, that's mostly because I was getting sick of working on one project for an entire month and started doing things that I could pump out faster. Coupled with another terrible case of DM burnout, and the increasing struggle that was fully drawing an entire video. But who cares about all that stuff, because I'm back! with another wacky D&D story. Bet you read the title and are wondering how this one's gonna escalate. Well, get comfy on that office chair, toilet, or bed that you're relaxing on, and I'll tell you. It all started back when my main D&D group had just reached level 19. After traveling to the fifth layer of hell to track down a crazy dangerous wizard, they ended up in a catastrophic fight that caused this lunatic's all-powerful magical staff to activate. The magic tore into everything that could be seen all the way to the horizon, including both the wizard and the party. Every Everyone was now trapped in his magical staff. Nobody could get in, and nobody could get out. Now, out of game, I was finding it hard to prepare D&D sessions for these players because of how high of a level their characters were. Sure, it was fun for a while, but as I've said in older videos, high-level D&D is a neat vanity that shouldn't overstay its welcome. Well, that's if you're a bad dungeon master like me and can't prepare for the 800 different magical spells and items the party might abuse every session. Otherwise, feel free to let your players go wild with power and keep on playing for as long as you want. Anyway, I called an end to the level 19 game after that session, and we moved back to playing a more humble first level campaign. It was definitely a nice change of pace moving back to more relatable quests and struggles. Fighting an all-powerful wizard in the Fiddler of Hell while giant frost worms attack from all sides? Nah, I'd much prefer a random cabbage vendor being attacked by giant rats. After this, I did some research on a few fun D&D modules to play through, and came up with Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Apparently, the missions, pacing, and villains in this book were really well designed, so might as well give it a go. This module was also taking place in the same world that the high-level campaign was. So NPCs knew about the legendary heroes who saved the world from Tiamat, freed an entire city from the hell pits of Avernus, and then went missing a few years back. If you remember the characters from the last D&D stories, Ace the Paladin's small village was now a thriving city. Hebor the Dragonborn's new crime organization was growing strong. Aegon the Half-Elf's Magical Academy for Orphans was first class in the world, and Anna the Human's <coughs> pr protein powder manufacturing plant grew to 20% the size of Waterdeep. So, why did Anna start a protein powder company again? Oh, only members of my church got discounts on the powder, so if you wanted, like, an even better price, you're just gonna need to convert. Also, how am I supposed to save the world if I wasn't filthy rich? Do you know how expensive it is to maintain my power armor? Anyway, you get the picture. These heroes left a big impact on the world, and the new level 1 party was playing through the aftermath of all these events. As the group banded together and went on smaller missions for coin and fame, an evil presence loomed outside of the city. An insane beholder named Xanathar had a hate distaste for nobility, and planned to abduct and kill as many rich kids as he could find. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot to say that if any of these details seem off from what you played through or read in the module, then it was probably changed to better fit my party's characters, so keep that in mind. One of the members, a cunning spy named Callus Melodia, had been traveling with the party while they searched for a magical stone. Remember that all-powerful wizard staff from earlier? Well, apparently, this stone could lead you to wherever the heck it was located, and Xanathar wanted to add it to his collection. To some characters, that staff was the reason a family member died. To others, it had criminals trapped inside who started a reckless war against Tiamat. And for one, it had the reason protein powder was now canon in my world, so everyone had a reason to find this stone first. After countless sessions, the party finally managed to get their hands on it. In their makeshift casino hideout, everyone began planning how they should go about keeping the stone safe from Xanathar's minions while they searched for the staff. Callus had done a pretty good job staying under the radar. There were multiple events that took place foreshadowing what's about to happen, but nobody caught on to them in time. Hey, Theodore. 
Mind if I see that stone for a moment? Without so much as a second thought, they handed it to him. And immediately afterwards... So yeah, all their hard work was abruptly torn away as Callus returned to his boss with the stone. Their plan now wasn't how they could find the staff, oh no. The new plan was finding Callus and snapping him in two, and then find the staff. Another tiefling that the party hired to serve drinks at their casino was in a short relationship with Callus and knew where his house was, so the remaining party members went out to search for him. In the middle of a dingy alleyway was the door to his home. It had a single, dirty window and a wooden door. One player went to grab the doorknob and... Yeah, Callus wasn't just a thief, but a tormentor, and his house was rigged up with all sorts of fun traps for the party to walk straight into. A different player broke open the window and tried to crawl inside. They tried to bust down the door. They headed down the house's basement, and the stairs became a slide, which would have killed them all if they hadn't used magic in the nick of time. And finally, at the bottom of this fun house had a dark room with glyphs on the walls. To see better, they tried to light a candle in the room. A few rounds of initiative started just because so many characters were bleeding out while the paladin was trying to heal them all. Thankfully, the charades ended there, letting the party finally read the glyphs. There's no doubt about it. Callus was working for the Xanathar's guild this entire time. Days later, an ex-member of that same guild finds the party. Knowing that their group had been the main opposition to Xanathar as of late, he wanted to get some revenge on his boss. I can't stand that blasted beholder anymore. I take longer than a week to invent a literal mech suit for him, and he threatens to blast my head off. Look, here's where the guild hall is. If you really want to get on Xanathar's bad side, he's got a pet goldfish. You know, the one on the Xanathar's Guide to Everything book. Never would have guessed, I know. It could be used as a bargaining chip, but otherwise, don't push your luck. This mission seemed like guaranteed death, but the party couldn't just end it like this. They decided that slapping Callus and stealing the stone back was worth the risk, and traveled for three days through the plains east of Waterdeep. Eventually, the terrain started to take on a weird shape. Tons of seemingly random holes were blasted through the ground, almost as if they were disintegrated from the laser eyes of a beholder. Only a little worrying, but they kept on moving. The front door was unguarded and wide open, allowing the party a chance to sneak through and snoop around. They found that aforementioned fish in a giant bowl, along with the stone they were looking for sitting in the gravel. On any normal heist, they'd grab the stone and leave, but while procrastinating going on this adventure, Xanathar had a few of their friends and family members abducted, so getting out of here with them as well was a high priority. A few moments of scouting later and the group found a massive pit fighting arena, with the prison cells being just on the other end. Squeezing by, everything seemed fine. I mean, nobody was really paying attention to them except... Wait, who are you? Um, tourists? Likely story. Visiting hours were over 10 minutes ago. I'll ask you again, who are you? And as Anathar hovered over the group, Callus peeked his cheeky face out from the sidelines, curious to see how Xanathar would tear them to shreds. However, nobody expected what would happen next. The bard took a deep breath, and with the most deadpan expression he could muster, yelled out, Your fish is dead. Then he used magic to make himself look like a fish and started flapping on the floor. All Xanathar could do was stare at this imbecile in front of him as he taunted his beloved fish's death, wiggling his de-evolved body like an inflatable tube man at a used car dealership. You... What? what? Disintegration beams started flying everywhere. Xanathar went mad and started blasting everything and anyone he could see, starting with the bard. Everyone took the initiative to get the heck out of the guild while he was busy. Somehow, however, the level 5 bard was able to expertly avoid and resist nearly every single one of the beholder's eye beams while paralyzed. Eventually, his paralysis ended. Nearly everything around this fish boy had been vaporized, yet not a single damaging beam ever made contact. Honestly, if even one of these beams managed to hit him, he was definitely dead. I mean, these things did way more damage than he could ever soak. Once the bard was able to properly speak again, he yelled out, Bro, chill! I said I'm your fish's dad! We all paused for a moment. Wait, wait, wait. You said that you're his fish's dad, not that his fish is dead. Yeah, that's what I meant. Oh, 
Well, I guess that makes a little more sense. With this brief opening, the bard spoke clearly and not only ensured to Xanathar that his fish was alive, but that its missing father had finally been found. Oh, well why didn't you say so earlier? The beholder was in a better mood now and was willing to peacefully talk with the party again. Later on, a deal was made where the party would help Xanathar get his hands on the magic staff and any extra loot found with it, and the group would get to pretend that this all never happened. Also, the bard would need to be a support to father and take good care of his goldfish child for the remainder of the campaign. Sounds like a good deal to me. So what's the lesson here? If you're in a life or death situation where anything you say could kill you, make sure to speak as clearly as possible, or your DM will get confused and a psychopathic beholder might try to turn your bones into dust. During this session, I'm pretty sure the bard's player was having microphone issues, seeing as our group plays online. Considering how hilarious of a moment it made though, I don't think anyone was upset in the slightest. Anyway, thanks for watching. Watching. If you honestly enjoyed the video, then consider subscribing for more quality content like this, and I'll see you all next time.